Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here with my spoiler-free review for The Missing of Claire de Lune by Christelle Dabo, translated by Hildegard Searle. This book came out on May 7th, and I received a free copy in exchange for an honest review. I have a full spoiler-free review on the first book, which I will link down below in case you haven't seen that one yet or you haven't read the first book yet. I am going to try to keep this review as spoiler-free as possible for the first book as well, so I'm going to try not to give away any big things that happened in the first book. So to start off with, something I really, really loved about this book is that there's a recap for the first book at the beginning of this one, which I really appreciated because I read that first book about a year ago and I did remember like most of what happens. I usually have a pretty good memory for books in series, but it was really nice to have that reminder of what was going to be important for this book specifically. There were definitely a couple of things that were emphasized in that summary that I was glad to have that reminder for. And I wish that more series had um, had that feature, like a little recap at the beginning of each new book. Because if you just read the first one, it's easy to skip, but if it's been a while, then that's really nice to go into this one knowing everything that you're supposed to know. As far as the plot goes for this novel, I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked the mystery aspect of it and how we got things revealed about what was going on in this world and why certain characters were disappearing, why things were happening, um, how this relates to kind of the political factions that we started learning about in the first book. And that whole mystery plot takes off pretty quickly, which I also enjoyed. Pacing is not generally something I pay attention to a lot in books, but I feel like this one was well paced because there were enough reveals and enough twists to keep you going without making it feel like there was nonstop action and no room to breathe. I also loved the setting of this book. I think I liked the setting even more than the first one because we spend most of our time on like the most interesting um, the most interesting parts of this world, I think, that we had discovered so far, while also getting to explore other parts of the world that I ended up really enjoying. I referenced the political factions earlier, and that's another thing that I think this book continues to do really well, is these different groups of people and how they're all like fighting each other, and some of them are after the same things, but they're not actually on the same side, and it's just like, it's really interesting. Um, if you like political fantasy, I think this is a great book for that. And I also really like how unexpected some of the plot developments were. I am pretty good at guessing twists in books, or just kind of how a story is to go and there were a couple of things that I didn't really see coming or I didn't really think of as a strong possibility or a possibility at all and I really liked that I liked being surprised the one thing I didn't enjoy quite as much about the plot of this one um, is like I'm not a huge fan of the overarching story of this series like kind of the hints that we're starting to get about about Farouk and the other spirits and where they came from and who's in charge of them I, like, I didn't strongly dislike it, but they were my least favorite parts of the book, and honestly, <laughs> I didn't find them nearly as interesting as the politics and the characters and the worlds that, that we were following for most of the book. Like, Ophelia and Thorne's storyline and how they fit into um, this arc and the other arcs, I found that vastly more interesting than kind of the overarching plot, although that from reviews I've seen, that does seem to be a somewhat unpopular opinion. I know a lot of people really enjoy that kind of bigger, um, that big picture aspect, so you might enjoy that too. I'm just saying that personally for me, I didn't love that, but I still really enjoyed the book. Although I will say I like that we are starting to get more answers about those, um, those kind of diary entry sections that are sort of like interspersed throughout the book. I remember the first in the first novel those were kind of confusing and I do like that we're starting to get more answers there, but the story itself that element didn't interest me as much as the rest of the book. And then one of my favorite things about this book and definitely one of my favorite things for the first book as well was the characters and especially like the main characters and their development. Ophelia and Thorne, I love them so much and it's especially noteworthy for Thorne because when he was first introduced in that first book, I hated him. <laughs> I was really hoping that he wouldn't be around like for most of the book and now he's like one of my favorite characters if not my favorite character and I really don't want anything bad to happen to him like I just love him so much and the fact that Christelle Davo was able to like do that like to make that turnaround happen so seamlessly and so believably was just really impressive to me. I love him. Please keep him safe. And I really enjoyed how these side characters were developed as well, especially Berenild and Archibald, I think were two of the ones that really stood out to me. I just liked seeing how there was more to them than meets the eye, and Berenild especially, like, I had kind of mixed feelings about her in the first book because she did a lot of things that were not good, you know, that you weren't supposed to like or sympathize with, but I really liked learning more about her past and who she is and why she makes the choices she does. Like, I don't think I completely forgive her, but I understand her a lot better and I like her and I want her to be happy. One of the only characters I wasn't so sold on was Farouk, the spirit of this poll that we are currently at. And I kind of alluded to this earlier with the discussion of the overarching plot. I just didn't care for Farouk that much. Um, I didn't find him as interesting as I feel like a lot of readers did and like we were supposed to. I didn't care so much for his scenes. Like I just wasn't really intrigued by him or by like developments about who he is and where he came from and like his personality and all of that and like why he does certain things. Um, 
I didn't really enjoy that as much. He was one of my like least favorite characters, not because he was especially bad, but just because compared to how much I loved the other ones, he just didn't grab my attention for some reason. And then going back to characters and like character development, I love Ophelia so much and I'm so proud of her in this book and I just love the fact that like the majority of this book could basically be, from Ophelia's perspective at least, could basically be summed up as her getting so fed up with people treating her like a child and like she doesn't know anything and she's like everyone stop it <laughs> and I just love that like I just am so excited to see how her character continues to grow and I love that we're seeing like we're seeing this like inner core of strength for her that we had hints of it's not like this came out of nowhere but she's really coming into her own and really like appreciating her own gifts and it's just like it's just great and then speaking of Ophelia um her and Thorne's relationship was so good like the development from like enemies to allies to kind of companions edging into romantic territory um I adored that I really really enjoyed it and I wasn't sure I would necessarily in my review for the first book I mentioned how there were some obstacles I could see coming up about their relationship but I think those were handled really well I feel like a really natural progression and the fact that Ophelia is refusing to let people treat her like she's so young I think that kind of equalized their power dynamic um, between her and Thorne because I think they're close to the same age actually but a lot of the way that the other characters treat her they treat Ophelia like she's a really young girl and Thorne like he's like a grown man um, so that felt a little weird in the first book depending on how their relationship would go and I think in this one that was handled really well I just really love both Ophelia and Thorne and I'm really happy that they are starting to care about each other as well <laughs> a quick mention on the writing as with the first book I feel like the translation was extremely well done in that it didn't at all feel disjointed or like you necessarily would think this was a translation if you didn't know that. Like the writing was really great and Hildegard Searle I think did a fantastic job of translating the French. Of course I can't say that definitively because I don't speak or read French but I just I, th I really loved the writing. This whole book was so quick for me to get to. I started it at like six o'clock at night I think and I had finished it by like late morning <laughs> the next day so I read this book very quickly I just had to know how everything was going to happen and I ended up giving The Missing of Claire de Lune four stars I really enjoyed it I think I loved it even more than the first book I am highly anticipating the next translation in the series whenever that comes out please let me know in the comments if you guys have read this book yet what you thought of it or if you're planning to pick it up or maybe you haven't started the series yet but you're considering it basically I want to know your thoughts on this series because I am really really enjoying it thank you guys so much for watching I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read bye